Welcome to Grace Digital Presentation. If one is to learn about prayer, he or she must go to the Bible, because the Bible is the main manual for prayer. God's Word is our immovable, unshakable prayer foundation. Prayers that are not founded upon that Word will go amiss and fail. Conversely, all prayers that are properly based on His Word will not fail. People who changed the world were people of prayer. Moses was a man of prayer. On at least one occasion, he spent 40 days and 40 nights in prayer. And Moses' leadership had an impact on the world, such as no other man has ever made. Though the Jews call Abraham our father, it's only Moses that they call our teacher. Moses' communion with God in prayer made him what he was. Elijah was also a man of prayer. He also prayed for 40 days and nights. His life also had a powerful effect on the world. In what way does the Bible influence our praying? The Bible reveals God's nature. If we are to have confidence in God, and if we are to believe that we can depend upon Him, we must understand who He is. The Bible tells us who God is and what He is like. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, you who set your glory above the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? Psalm 8, 1, 3 through 4. Psalm 19, 1 says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God, the skies display his craftsmanship, Hundreds of other passages declare the greatness, the majesty, the power, the glory, the extent of our God. If we are to become steadfast in prayer, we must read those passages. We must know them if we are to understand God's nature. And when we know God's nature, we can pray to Him in confidence. Solomon's great dedicatory prayer of the temple begins with, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in all of heaven above or on the earth below. You keep your covenant and show unfailing love to all who walk before you in wholehearted devotion. 1 Kings 8.23 Jesus' great teaching prayer for his disciples begins with, When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O Sovereign Lord, Creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, Acts 4, 24. All of these prayers had their basis in the Bible, and all of them gave honor to the innate nature of God. God's Word is vital in prayer. I believe that the Bible in your life will cause your prayer life to abound. By that, I mean that an intimate acquaintance with the Word of God will cause you to want to pray. It will actually give birth to your praying. The in-depth study of the Word of God and frequent involvement with God's Word will, quite naturally, cause prayer to spring forth from your heart and your lips. You can read the Bible until prayer comes to your lips. Then put the Bible down and pray. Bible reading and prayer often flow together and become one. Perhaps you have sometimes knelt and read a chapter or more from your Bible aloud and you were aware that God had accepted that reading of His Word as prayer, because the reading forth of the Word of God with your lips had actually been a prayer, and God brought forth the desired results of that prayer in your life. The Bible causes prayer to come alive. The Bible is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Proverbs 3.18 Hebrew 4.12 says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. Jesus said, The very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. John 6, 63 When the living word of God becomes an integral part of you, its vitality is imparted to you. When this happens, God's word makes your prayers come alive. When God's word is alive in you, things happen when you pray. There are many examples of this in the Bible. For instance, there was Hezekiah, the king of Israel. At one time he was sick and near death, and he prayed in 2 Kings 20, 1-3. Remember, O Lord, 
how I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. God heard Hezekiah's prayer and gave him 15 more years of life. As we study this Bible example, we can build up our faith to pray for a specific need, as Hezekiah did. As we pray, our prayers will be prayers of faith, not prayers of doubt. Such prayers become prayers of thrilling expectation because we have seen in God's Word what He has already done in a particular situation such as ours. When we have confidence in what God has said and what He has done, we pray boldly and realize what we have asked. Romans 10.17 is the biblical principle behind what we have been saying. So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. And then we have God's wonderful promise concerning prayer in 1 John 5, 14, and 15. And we are confident that He hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases Him. And since we know He hears us when we make our requests, we also know that He will give us what we ask for. Elijah was a man of God, a mighty man of faith. And when the son of a widow whom he knew died, Elijah prayed, O oh Lord, my Lord, please let this child's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's prayer, and the life of the child returned, and he revived. 1 Kings 17, 21 and 22 Prayers like these, rooted firmly in the Word of God, will change your life and the lives of your family. Prayers of faith like these will change the world. As you read the Word of God, do so with your heart open and reading can become praying. Likewise, when you pray, have your Bible close at hand, because as we have seen, the two of them, God's Word and prayer, flow together. Thus, even as the disciples asked Jesus in Luke 11, 1, teach us to pray. By your frequent and intimate involvement with God's Word, He will teach you to pray as well. Faith is a key to prayer. Why is it that some believers are never able to pray strong, effective prayers? One reason may be that they do not spend time studying the Word of God. As we have just read, the Bible creates faith. If you are not praying in faith, your exposure to God's Word may be limited. This is serious. If you don't pray in faith, your prayers will not be heard. They will be empty. God's Word, your faith, and your prayer are closely related. In other words, God's word in you, building up your faith, will result in answered prayer. The opposite is also true. The lack of God's word in you, resulting in little or no faith, will lead to few, if any, of your prayers being answered. Here's a principle you can count on. God's word in you in abundance will teach you how to pray effectively. The Bible teaches man how to listen and pray. One of the major problems with most Christians is that they talk more than listen. Have you ever watched a group of people in conversation? Try observing them when they don't know you are watching. In most cases, two or more people are talking simultaneously, while the others are waiting for a momentary break in the flow of words so they can jump in with their ready contribution. Hardly any of them are listening. Too often this happens when we approach God in prayer. We have become so accustomed to talking without listening that we pray without hearing what God is saying to us. Therefore, we don't hear from God. It isn't that He isn't speaking to us. Rather, we don't hear because our ears are so full of the sound of our own wordiness that we can't hear Him. It's a simple fact that nobody can be speaking and listening at the same time. We do one or the other. As a child, Samuel, who became a mighty man of God, learned a valuable lesson. He was told to say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. 1 Samuel 3, 9 In other words, I am going to keep still, Lord. I know you are talking to me, so I will listen and be quiet. When we develop such an attitude and put it into practice, we will be able to hear from God. But all too often, we tell God by our actions, if not by our words. Listen, God, for your servant speaks. 
no matter how much you think you have to say to God, who is the creator of the universe, it is never as important as what he would say to you. Prayer has two sides to it, your side and God's. If you have something to say to him, say it and listen. If you come before him to praise him, do so and become quiet before him. If you sense his desire to speak to you, go before him and listen. If you develop the ability to listen to God in your praying, you will be the richer for it. There are people of great prayer power to become quiet before the Lord for long minutes at a time. And their prayers often are not in words, and merely in articulate groans of high intensity. They were not really speaking, they were listening. At such times, these people were learning from God. God can speak to you most effectively while you listen during times of prayer. Also, these moments of quiet with God are times when we get to know Him in a much better way, more intimate way. The Bible teaches man to declare war in prayer. This was true with Jacob when he encountered an angel and wrestled with him in prayer all night. As daylight approached, the angel said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Genesis 32, 26. In verse 28 of Genesis 32, the angel blessed him. He said, Your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, From now on you will be called Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Such biblical events can teach you to pray. Such accounts will also show you that prayer is not always easy. Sometimes prayer is difficult because you are fighting, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the demonic world. Daniel fought against these forces and prevailed in prayer for 21 days. Daniel 10, 1 through 14. Elijah fought spiritual warfare in prayer. Jesus fought spiritual battles in prayer. Scores of others in the Bible held out against evil forces in prayer, and all of them are examples that prove that we can fight and win spiritual battles in prayer. Sometimes the fight is difficult, grueling, grinding. But when you hold on, when you fight the good fight of faith, when you pray without ceasing and win the victory, how sweet that victory is. Like Jacob, you will become a prince because you have learned something of inestimable value. You now possess power with God.